And welcome to Prince of Peace Lutheran Church here in Appleton, Wisconsin. We join together on this seventh Sunday of Pentecost to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. If you would like to follow along with a worship bulletin, you can go to our website, popappleton.org, and look on the left hand side under online gatherings. Our worship leaders today are Nate, running our technology. Colleen and Nancy leading our music, Pastor Roger preaching, and coming to us pre-recorded are Brigetta with our children's message, and Lynn reading our scripture lessons. If you would like to read scripture lessons for our worship service, please contact Monica Kohler. Her contact information is in the printed or digital church directory. She can give you instructions on how to record and submit your video clips and find a date that works for your schedule. This morning, following our worship service, we will have our congregational meeting via Zoom at 11 a.m. On Thursday and Friday, you received, received a Zoom invite from Prince of Peace to enter into this meeting. At our congregational meeting, we will elect our new church council officers and have reports from our treasurer, the Financial Sustainability Task Force, Long Range Planning, the Reopening Task Force, and an update on our stewardship appeal. If you would like to have the booklet, Christ in Our Homes for Devotions, it is available for you to pick up at our little library, which is located outside by our east parking lot. We are collecting donations for our Christmas in August, a project of giving clothes and other needed items to youth beginning the school year. 
To participate, please check out your Wednesday e-blast. Next Sunday, we will again have Holy Communion during our live streamed worship service. Thanks to all of you who sent us photos. First Communion photos are posted on Facebook. Let us now begin our worship with our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Join to the waters of in, and join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed in God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs to your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew us our lives with your great forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our gathering song, Great is the Lord. trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory, great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us 
us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. There are no other gods besides God. The word of the Lord does not fail to come to pass. We can trust in God through whom Israel and we are redeemed. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 25. For Paul, true spirituality means that we experience the reality of the Spirit, which enables us to pray as God's children, keeps us in solidarity with creation, and gives us unseen hope that God will liberate us and creation from bondage to death and decay. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then, where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat among them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom 
all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, friends, and welcome to our children's message today. Um, to get things started, I have a question for you. Have any of you ever helped to maybe plant things or maybe helped to pull weeds in a garden? Now, I've done a little bit of gardening, but I still find it hard sometimes to tell the difference between the plants and the weeds. And I have a picture here to show you, and I wonder if you can tell me which one is a plant and which one These is two pictures look pretty similar, but the picture on the top is of strawberry plants, and the picture on the bottom is of weeds. So, as you can see by looking at that picture, it's sometimes not so easy to tell the difference between weeds and good plants. And we're going to talk about a, a parable that, that Jesus told that kind of talks about that. So in our parable, in our message today, Jesus talks about how a farmer had planted what we're going to call the good seeds to grow wheat. Now wheat's a really good plant. It's what flour is made from. And we use flour to make bread and cookies and cakes and all sorts of good tasting things. So the farmer went through and planted those good wheat seeds, but while everyone was sleeping, someone came and planted weeds among the good seeds. So when the farmer's wheat sprouted, there were bunches of weeds mixed in with the wheat, and the weeds and the wheat looked the same. Well, the problem here is that it's not good for weeds to grow in with the plants, and the weeds they take up a lot of the nutrients and the water and the soil so that the plants can't get as much of those things and the weeds might grow taller than the plants and get more of the sunshine and they, they make the space crowded so the good plants don't have enough room to grow. Now as soon as the farmer in the story saw the weeds he said an enemy has come in and done this and the farmer's servants asked well do you want us to pull up the weeds? But he said no, because the weeds and the wheat looked so similar. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between the weeds and the good plants like we saw in that picture. Now, other times you can, but if the weeds and the plants are mixed in, it's, it's still easy to pull up the good plants by mistake when you're pulling up the weeds because the roots might get tangled between the weeds and the good plants. And so then if you yank a weed out of the dirt, you may pull out a good plant by mistake. And that's what the farmer was afraid would happen if they tried to pull up the weeds. So he said, let them grow together until the harvest, and then we'll separate them and burn up the weeds. So what does that mean for us? Well, you see, God is like the farmer. He's the ultimate judge of our hearts. And just like the farmer ultimately decided on what the good plants were. And Jesus is telling us that good and bad actually exist together in the world, even in the same people, just like the wheat and the weeds grew together. And now we can't really look at people like we do plants and say, oh, that's a good one, that's a bad one. But sometimes we might be tempted to do that, but we shouldn't. God sees both the good and the not so good in all of us. And we actually don't have to worry about separating the good from the bad because he will take care of that. See, the truth is we all are sinful and we all make mistakes, but we are saved by Jesus, which is a blessed and a wonderful thing. In the end, God just wants all the people to come to know him. He's a just judge, and he loves all of his people, and he wants them to love him. So, rather than judging people, we should pray for them. We should ask God to soften the hearts of those that are unkind and to use us to bring others into his family. So basically, in the parable, Jesus makes it clear 
that it's not really our job to decide who are the good people and who are the bad people in the world. God knows who are his friends and who are his enemies. And our job, our job, is to show the love of Jesus to everyone. That's our children's message for today. I will see you next week. Have a wonderful week, and God bless all of you. Good morning, friends. Today we're going to sing Be Bold, Be Strong. I was listening to the Bible verses that Lynn was reading today, and I heard a lot of words that kind of go with our song today. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Keep walking forward. So I thought Be Bold, Be Strong would be a good one to do today, and since you guys know it, let's sing through it two times. everybody. Great job. We'll see you next time. There are lots of ways of illustrating what the kingdom of God is like. Here's one. We don't go into a room and turn on the dark. Darkness, you see, has no creative power in and of itself. It does not give life. It does not even give energy. It's simply the absence of light. We go into a room as Christians and we turn on the light. You see, light is not just the absence of darkness, but it erases and chases away the darkness that is around us. In today's gospel, Jesus uses another example. Jesus is giving another example of what the kingdom of God is like. He talks about planting again. Now notice that whenever Jesus explains the kingdom, he always compares it to something alive, something life-giving, something light-giving, something creative and revitalizing. Before last Sunday, when we did our first live stream communion, I had a conversation with our local bishop, Jerry Manchild. I invited him to send farewell wishes to Will and Ruth Blado as they depart from our congregation and where they have been active members since Will's retirement from First English Lutheran Church here in Appleton many years ago. The bishop sent a brief video that I'll be sending to Will and Ruth later this week. I also continued our conversation that we had started as a congregation back in May, 
and our numerous conversations that we've had on offering communion. And we had that conversation again with the bishop. And through that discernment process of listening to you and talking at numerous council meetings and prayer among ourselves, we decided to offer that. Now, a special part of last Sunday when we first offered our live stream communion were several of our youth who had completed their instruction training. Now, you can see some of their pictures and how members set their tables last week. And I hope you'll continue to send those pictures in, not only from last week, but when we do it again next week. Now, that seemed to you like something maybe brand new, but actually it wasn't. In the ancient church, before Christianity became legal and mainstream in the Roman Empire, while Christianity was an illegal subterranean movement that would meet in the catacombs or in people's homes, that was how church was done, over dinner tables, among family members. So actually, we we're reclaiming and reframing an old practice and using modern technology to keep growing our faith. That's very true with how God's gospel is. God's kingdom is a lively, light-giving, life-giving, rambunctious, growing organism. Paul talks about it as being a body. It keeps finding ways to bring forth light. In the ancient church, when it was still illegal to be a Christian and you would be persecuted for it, and also in many parts of the world, it seems like whenever the authorities tried to stamp out Christianity, it would just keep sprouting and spreading, kind of like the grass in my driveway and sidewalk at home. You just can never get rid of it all the way. That's how Christian, Christianity is. Because it's not just us doing the planting, but it's God. And it's God's institution that does this. And it's God that helps the growth happen. Now, Jesus constantly uses plant and growth and light language when he talks about believers. Paul, as I mentioned, uses body language. But this indeed is not our natural way of living. We would much rather live just to ourselves. We'd much rather be static and alone and just take care of our own needs and just share the light that we have just with ourselves and those closest to us. But that is not what God wants for us. God has designed us to be in relationship with one another, with God and each other, to share our light. That is one reason God sent his human son, and not just a rule book or a set of commandments to save us. God wants to be in relationship with us, and we want to be in relationship with God in return. That's the spirit that's responding back to God. And that is how we grow. Now Paul touches on that today when he says that we have been adopted into a new way of living. Now being part of God's community means putting away our own selfish ways, our self-centered ways of living. It means dying to self. And as we get to the conclusion of our spring meeting today, you will hear Pastor Will Blado talk about that as he gives a farewell to you on video. He'll talk about dying to self and being raised to the newness of life echoing what the life of the Christian is to be and what Paul is talking about. 
That is how our relationship with Christ works. It is turning light on in the world that chases away the darkness. Paul reminds us that God takes us from our selfish, sinful nature and adopts us into his family. Now, adoption is a very intentional word because we don't choose to be adopted. No one chooses their parents. But God chose us. God adopted us. In fact, Paul talks about it this way. He says, we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. And we haven't done anything to earn that or deserve that. But it's a gift, a free gift of God that's spreading out into our lives and into the world and dispelling the darkness and capturing the light of God's Son and reflecting that out as we grow in the world. And we're given an eternal inheritance because of God's grace and not our own. It's a gift, a free gift, that we are privileged to share. But how do we get to that sharing? What do we have to give up? You ever look at a seed? When you look at seeds, they look hard and lifeless and dead without any possibility at all. But you add some water and some sunshine and life sprouts. It's the same with us. Add our baptismal water to our hard souls, the warm love of God's Son, and life happens. But to do so, it must break out of its hard shell must die to its self-contained prison of self. As I talked to the bishop, I said, in the last three months I haven't been reading the constant drumbeat of stories about how the church is dying. That was the constant refrain I had been reading before, but then, but then a worldwide pandemic comes, and then the church goes to root, it goes home, and it becomes dispersed and deployed. And we start a food drive to feed over 100 families, uh, nearly 150 families from our community, not just our congregation. And members donate time and money And we invite people into worship, and we get activity from around the United States and Africa and Romania and Lord knows where. We gather readers and musicians of all ages and locales, and our quilters who are accustomed to gathering together in a large group now gather by themselves in in their home and They make PPE and masks for our community and also for us. We take a moment to slow down and pray and catch our breath and have some time with family. We check in with friends and we make new ones. We share pictures of our lives. We start a difficult look at our own privilege that we have as white people in this nation. And how did this all happen? Well, Paul tells us how it happens. He says, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Ah, the secret ingredient for us is the suffering. 
And we know a bit about suffering, don't we? As if we needed a lesson. But you see how our suffering, our death to self, the death of our security, the death of our certainty, leads us to plant our roots more deeply in the soil of Christ's suffering and death. But let's read on. Paul says, I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to re be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Notice that last verse. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. It doesn't wait to show something to the children of God. We, of the children of God, become the demonstrations of God's love into the world. This is our time to show God's love. We Christians who follow a suffering Savior know what darkness is like, know how to survive and thrive in suffering. We do that by sinking our roots more deeply into Christ's soil. Now, this is not only a scripture that talks about the glory of our life in the hereafter in some heavenly place, but in our life here now after this moment. Beth and I have been geeking out on watching the musical Hamilton that is released on Disney on July 3rd. In fact, I've been waking up at night with songs in my head. There's one song in particular that Hamilton sings which is called My Shot. Hamilton, who was orphaned by his father as a young boy on a Caribbean island, and he survived sickness that killed his mother, also a hurricane that ravaged that island and then was supported by islanders and sent off to New York City to get a new life. Now his deepest desire is to make a name for himself and he joins with other revolutionaries and sings, I'm not throwing away my shot. Now I know that many of you have that tune running through your head right now. So let's take that tune and transfer it to our Christian life. Here's the moment we are living in. This moment of suffering is our shot as the children of God to reveal to all of God's creation God's unmerited love, to show the world how to suffer, but to do it with hope in our hearts. Perhaps we see the sufferings of others in a new way. Perhaps we hear the cries of freedom of fellow Americans who have been slaves by law and then by societal constraints in a new way, a way that we never have seen before. Perhaps when we read the prophet Isaiah's words of comfort and hear the Lord saying, do not fear or be afraid, have I not told you from of old and declared it that you are my witnesses? Is there any God besides me? There's no other rock, I know not one. Isaiah didn't write to a superpower nation like the United States. He wrote to a small backwater nation that was clinging by its fingernails to hang on. And the only way it would is to bury itself deeply in God's word and trust that God would bring hope and a harvest from the seeds that were planted. God is still with us. Our God is beckoning us to plant ourselves deeply in his love, to turn on the light that was given to us in our baptisms, and to turn off the darkness. This is a time of struggle. 
a time of suffering and longing, but also a time of opportunity and possibility. Don't misunderstand me. I don't mean to say that this is how I want life to be, nor am I glad that this happened. Oh no, I look forward to the day when I can take off my mask for good. But now I wear it for the good of myself and for the good of my neighbor. And when I am tempted to not wear it, I think of my constant struggle with my own sin and selfishness and vanity. In the midst of our current suffering, let's not root, let's root ourselves more deeply in the soil of the one who knows our pain and be watered by our baptisms and reveal the hope that is found as we turn our faces to the light of God's Son. Amen. We join in our hymn of the day. Build us up, Lord. the devil and all the forces that work against God, and then by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I renounce all evil, every force that moves against God's will. I renounce the powers of this world, the structures of inequality, and the agents of oppression that undermine God's purposes. I renounce my own participation with these powers, my own actions and inactions that draw me from God. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. God gives abundantly. We see this in the food that comes from the earth to the talents that come from God's people and express themselves through the ministry of the church. Trusting in God's abundance leads us to live a life of generosity. We give of our time, talent, and treasures to bless others as our witness to the love of Jesus Christ. As members of Prince of Peace, you have blessed many in and through this congregation. You have given so that the youth and adults of this congregation learn the Word of God. You have given so that those in need are helped. You have given so that the gospel is proclaimed throughout the world. Your generosity strengthens the mission of this congregation to grow in faith and to reach out in love. We know that these are challenging times financially for many people, and so we appreciate whatever you can give. If you would like to give financially online, you can do so at our website, popappleton.org. P-O-P On the right-hand side of the home page is a red Donate button. Click on that button, and it will lead you to a secure website. You can give there. You can also send in your offerings. We check the mail regularly. We give thanks to God for the abundance of the blessings we have received, and we share those blessings with others. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We continue now with our offering song. There's no 
never a bad time There's never a bad time There's never a bad time Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Call into unity with one another and all creation. Let us pray for the world that we share. God of harvest, you sow the good seeds of the gospel in Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intention. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Show us how to live in harmony with your creation. Protect those at risk in severe heat and other in climate weather. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by fear, hatred, and greed, torn apart by war, famine, and disease. Mend the minds of the human family so that we can work together to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus, taking the precautions we need to and supporting one another. Mend the hearts of the human family so that we can create a just society where we abolish racist laws and policies and truly love all our neighbors as ourselves in both words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to those who are brokenhearted. Provide for those who are struggling financially during this pandemic and guide us to those we can help. Comfort those who are isolated and alone, those who are dealing with depression, and those who are grieving. Support those who are battling addiction or mental health issues. Safeguard all health care workers, frontline workers, and essential workers. Bring your healing to all who are in pain, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, including Sue, Ruth, Arlen, Shirley, Emma, Bill, Paul, Dave, Zodwa, Judy, Mark, those with the COVID-19 virus, those living with cancer and other diseases, those who are shut in or on hospice care, and those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. God of life, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We give you thanks for the work and dedication of our outgoing council members, President Greg Knudsen, Vice President Nancy Showerman, Secretary Jean Lee, and Treasurer Tim Rowinski and for outgoing members of Mission Endowment, Mark Fergins and Jean Lee. Continue to use their talents to bless your people. We also give you thanks for Ruth and Will Blado and their ministry among us. Surround them with your care as they transition to life in Madison. 
As we continue to worship at home, strengthen us and the ministries of our congregation with your word, your sacraments, and your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. May the God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.
Prince of Peace is a family of Christians growing in faith and reaching out in love. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. We hope to see you all for our 11 a.m. congregational meeting following this service. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you Gracious to you, the Lord. Turn.